This is episode number 420 of the Health Fitness Podcast. I'm in a fight in association with Smith Street Paleo. You need to review and rate the podcast over on iTunes, and we will send you a bag of your, we discussed this the other week, you're on to nut and seed biscuits yep. now, off tahina brownies. But are we even selling these anymore? Like, yeah. they are never there when They're I come. always out of stock. That's great news. Um, but the point is, is that <laughs> back to the real point, not about Andre's eating habits again, but back to the real point. If you rate and review the podcast for us over in iTunes, share it with your friends. We will love you forever, and we will send you a bag of Smith Street Paleo goodies. Yes. 420. Last show was pretty good. I liked it. Yeah, man. Carly Rothman. That's Ashley interesting. Neve. She she called me out on her name. Got it wrong. Used her pre-married name. That's actually <laughs> what her email was. Lean Living Girl, folks. If you haven't checked that out, leanlivinggirl.com. Mate, one of my favorite shows, except obviously today's show because guest is here and I'm supposed to supposed to enjoy it. But one of my favorite shows so far was, in, in the last few weeks, was definitely Tom Evans. Yeah. He was in 416, the Ultra Runner, and he actually has that race in Spain. I don't know if it's gone. I should really know that. He just did the Costa Rica one, right? That was before, yeah. 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 And he was in Spain a few weeks ago. Anyway, enough about those guys. But if you didn't see, as well, a lot of people have been asking, and I have to plug this one, a lot of people have been asking about... Inner Talks 15 with Sarah Usher, which you can go and check out, guys, on the show. 414 is the show you need to get for that. <coughs> That's enough plugging the previous shows. Today is all about a gentleman who has had an incredible journey in life, generally, but in the last 18 months, it's taken a big turn, topping out at 235 kilos prior to meeting you, Andre. We're going to talk today, Mohammed. Al Kasmi Mo, welcome to the show. Love the beanie. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> it's one of my favorite beanies, and it helps out with a lot of things. Yeah, like, uh, keeping my hair drier than keeping your normal. hair dry. Like That's normal. really important. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us, and thank you for everything that you have done over the last year or so. Eighteen months. Soon it'll be two years. Yeah, that you've been on this journey. Let's jump into. The earlier part of your life. Talk to us a little bit about growing up. You are from the Emirates, although yes. you have the. Am I allowed to abuse people for their accent? <laughs> <laughs> for Go now. ahead. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> you don't have a typical Emirati accent. Give us a little bit of background on yourself and introduce yourself to the listeners, mate. All right. Uh, before before I could start, I want to say thank you very much for uh, uh, bringing me into the podcast. This is like one of the better days of my life that's that's that is <laughs> that's honestly awesome, the man. truth because uh plans within plans i keep telling everybody so this is something like a, a learning experience very good uh, we're happy to have you so far you're doing good keep talking yeah um <laughs> yeah you want me to keep talking okay so um never had a problem <laughs> so the, the beginning of uh my life was very different right it was um like I grew up with with uh, a lot of traveling, so yep. me, my mom, my dad, uh, all of my siblings, we travel to London most of the time. Mo- like I think twice a twice a year right. in the summer and winter. Uh, from that, my vocabulary and grammar it, it expanded exponentially. And um, surprisingly, I, as a kid, I had a dictionary in my hand, and I'm not kidding. Like walking around. With, to my mom in a, in a book <laughs> in a in a book fair and telling my mom, hey mom, um, what does this word mean? And she she just looks at it and she's like, I don't know what what does it mean. And I just told her I just told her like it's it's the thing on the elbow. It's called a weenus. And it's <laughs> like I I don't know like what was wrong with me when I was a kid. I was I was very um, over ecstatic with 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 simple stuff. Yeah. Like I was I was I was the type of kid that runs around goes through so many things. Um, excited over like the simplest of things like um, reading that was a bit I should have like gone back to that in my life but anyway um, growing up I was way too into watching TV yeah right I was that type of kid that would sit down in front of the TV shut up and drain all the information what sort of stuff did you used to watch Barney (laughs) what What? Barney the dinosaur Teletubbies yeah yeah back then when I was like four three three four years old 
No, even like one, I was a one year old, like draining all that information. Was that just your parents putting you in front of the TV or are you like just, you know, putting yourself in front of it and just making that decision? It, it was both. It was okay. both. She, they, they, they wanted me to like um, behave. So growing up in front of a TV, I gained more information than they thought I would. Yeah. This made me have this weird accent. Okay. <laughs> which everybody suspects that it's from California, but I've yeah. never been to the U.S. This is quite amazing. Where, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Where it's come yeah. from. Yeah. 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 It's ridiculous. Like growing up with TV, like that would be understandable, but gaining the accent from TV, yeah. that's not normal. That's quite cool. Yeah. So, so that's that's where it comes. So, from. a lot of TV, computer games, or were you able to play board games or go outside and you know play like do usual stuff like you know skateboarding or running, climbing trees, and those kind of things. I know there's not that many trees here, but it's gonna say this guy. <laughs> a little bit. Um, back Run up then, the sand dunes. <laughs> just running up the sand dunes. Uh, back then, I was uh, I wasn't as. Um, hyperactive as I, I, I am now or you know I was more hyperactive than I was in high school um, I did a lot of uh, video games walking around you know exploration stuff like in malls and yeah and like walk, walking around but you know part of a big family I, I didn't have the, the the trust in going to more places that I'd like to right. okay so, so they wouldn't they wouldn't feel allow comfortable. me to go. Yeah, yeah. They We'd don't feel comfortable around me going to other places that I'd like to go, like the park. Yeah. Do you by think myself. Do you think that's a a normal thing here in the UAE that the parents are maybe overprotective or afraid of letting their kids, you know, go out and play in the street or you know, play or whatever you play in Dubai? Uh, back then, no. They okay. they back then it was just like, yeah, you can just go outside and and play play football, play basketball, play whatever. Yeah run in the streets, ride your bike. Back then it was normal. Nowadays I have no idea how the children are being brought up. Probably the way that I think they would be with iPads in their faces. Yeah. So I think they would be content when when they get out of that phase and then they're going to throw them out to yeah. be more active. But I, I wasn't as active as I would like to be. So did, were you able to start any sports when you were young? I mean, obviously, when you get into kindergarten and high school mm -hmm. and all these kind of things, were there sports accessible for you and the other kids? Or was it just, you know, go to school, go home, watch TV, play video games? Uh, sports sports is basically a part of the natural habitat of the UAE yeah. in terms of our society. Uh, school In school, sports was a must so, like, in, in the break time, they would have, like, either basketball or football. Uh, there would be, like, half an hour of going into the field. Well, in my case, in my first school, it was, like, up a large field of sand. <laughs> and I literally mean a large field of sand with, like, two goals. Okay. <laughs> uh, I wasn't... I, I was never into sports uh, in my first six years of education. Okay. It was I, I don't know like it didn't it didn't appeal to me in general because you know every every like everybody adored football or to my American uh, listeners or to rather to their American listeners yeah. I'm just so excited uh, <laughs> soccer uh, yeah um, <laughs> exactly. I'd, that was I a know, that was mine, a good save. Theirs, we got theirs. Theirs. You made uh, the Europeans mad, but the Americans happy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good thing or bad thing. <laughs> I, I believe it's football. It's not soccer. Um, yeah, for, I've I've never liked soccer, football. Again, there I go. I've never liked football to begin with because it was it was more around the feet, and I wasn't really that, you know, um, in not intuitive, but more uh, coordinated. Okay. All right. However, when I moved schools, long story, um, I got into basketball, and that was my preferred sport. Okay, cool. So I got into basketball a lot faster than I thought I would. I had uh, friends that played basketball. We had like a large court in the in like the big uh, central classroom hub thing. It was like a, a large square full of classrooms, and then like in the middle was like a courtyard. That sounds pretty sick. It was. It was pretty sick until I pushed someone by accident. So a little bit better coordination yeah. with the upper body. Yeah, it was. It was a lot more. Um, it was a lot more fun for me 
because it was it was more hands on. Yeah. And I don't know. It was it was much more exciting. How old were you when you got into that? Uh, Lord, I think I was around thirteen. Right. And what shape were you in physically there? <laughs> oh, I was I was <laughs> fat. <laughs> okay. I was as fat as can be. <laughs> See, this is this is where we really need to get to. You you were not in good shape. No, no, I was never in good shape. I grew up like having snacks every ten minutes. What was, was your favorite? Snack. Really? <laughs> well, we asked that question to Kasim, and he was telling us that his favorite was double Whopper double with wop- double fries and large Coke or oh, at, okay. at Burger so, King. Yeah. So, what what was yeah. your go to? What was your go to snack? Bread. Bread. Yeah, it was that bad. With anything on it? Or no. Really? Dude, I was that type of kid. That's got to be like the worst snack ever. I, <laughs> I was know. I was expecting something like seven packs of Skittles yeah. on yeah. ice cream. Yeah. No I Mars bar <laughs> ice creams chucked in there. Come on, you've got to get us a bit hungry. Do you know, do you know one of those uh, long breads, the, the long buns that they yeah. do for, not, not for like hot dogs, but like long sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. It was basically th- three of that a day. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's good. To the point where I literally hid it in my pocket going upstairs to my room. When did this start? The, the, the bread. The bread. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, geez, I think it was like when I was six years old. Really? Seven. So you'd been eating pretty well from when you were six years old. Yeah. And then I think around that time, all the fast food places became insanely promotional. Yeah. And which you was loved really them. bad. Yeah, I really, really adored fast food back then before I realized how bad they were. But at 13 years old, you're playing basketball and you were in bad shape. How much did you, were you noticeably overweight? Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like the 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 general fat kid in in, in the movies. But uh, how, how was like the, the general support, fat kid in I mean, the movies with like chocolate on their face? It, <laughs> if if you're realizing in this stage already that you're bigger than most kids. I yeah. mean, your your family obviously sees that as well. Your your friends sees that. What is the what was the support, or was there any encouragement for you to you know start eating better or getting more active, or was it more just Mohammed seems comfortable on this stage. Let's leave him and see what happens. No, 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 no. Over the years, my family kept trying to push me to realize that I was in a ditch. Right. They kept they kept telling me about how many people God rest, God rest their souls passed away from obesity and heart attacks and so many so many things, they, so many so many like advices and, and okay. recommendations and I don't know like I I had like the thick of uh, like I had a thick mind that didn't even allow me to process anything. Okay, and it was about a year and I think eight months ago that. They gave me a proper intervention. Finally realized that I was basically slowing, uh, slowly killing myself. 18 so months ago, we are at 235 kilos. And that's basically from your 6 years old to your 24, just of eating crap and being un- inactive, basically. Correct? Um, actually, a year and eight... Well, an e- a year and eight months ago, that was around... Uh, when I was at my peak before I came here, so yeah. I was around 226, yeah. and then prior to that, I was 235, yeah. where I wanted to have a quick, um, a quick fix, which was a gastric balloon. Yeah, and that just didn't work out. And that and that's a normal thing here, I guess. Yeah. I, when I came here, actually, it was the first time I've ever heard of this thing, and I remember meeting clients who was telling me about this, and I was like, I don't understand how. Like the the doctor is telling you that you should do this. What like, but th- that's crazy. Yeah, it's because it's easily accessible. It's just like you just drive for like ten minutes, apply, wait for like a couple of weeks, bam, you're in, you and it. you get it. And so, what what is the process with this gastronomic balloon? It's literally shoving a tube with a tiny balloon at the end of it, going down the throat to the stomach, uh, filling it with saline, and then. They would pull the wire out. You'd have the balloon for six months, and then it would be deflated and pulled out. So there wouldn't be that much space for food. So yeah. you would feel not hungry pretty much the whole. You would feel comfortable very quickly just having a little bit of food. Yeah. So they're playing with the organs basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's 
just to put it in a little bit of perspective, 235 kilos, I've just calculated, is over 500 pounds. Yeah. 528 pounds. Mm -hmm. You didn't get to that weight, like, you didn't didn't wake up one morning and you're in that state. You got there over, like, some pretty good dedication to eating this bread. Was there stages where you sort of were starting to think, like, when you... Playing that basketball, like uh, I'm the fat kid, or, or I don't look the same as the other kids, or you know, what, what, any like warning signs, mate? I know your family were oh, telling every time. you. Every well, time, every time. How did that feel? That's what I want to try and get to. I don't know. I was I was very like ignorant about the entire thing, but right. I knew that it was there. Yeah. And I just you know brushed it off. Did it not bother you? That I was the fat kid, yeah. fat kid in the group. No, it didn't really bother me because I was the one that was owning up to it. Right. There was like a couple more fat kids, but I was fatter than them. <laughs> so I just accepted the fact that I was the fat guy. You're basically number one in the category. I yeah. love how you speak about it. <laughs> number it's, one. It's so open. Dude, you're not the fat kid. I'm the fat yeah, kid. I'm I can, the fat I'll kid. Weigh Come you on. Any freaking day you want. <laughs> Let's have the food off. Come on. I can beat you with but that. W- w- what were you. What was going on though, mate? Like. You know it wasn't right. You knew that, like, what were you, th- what were you thinking? Anything, or you just, de- no, just I, completely denying it? No, I, it's not that I deni- denied it. I just accepted it. Right. Okay. It was just, it was just okay. I'm the fat guy. Something's gonna happen in the end. Oh well. That's what did, it. What did you think would th- would happen in the end? Uh, six feet under. Really? At an early age. You, you, oh yeah, probably like around thirty-five, thirty-seven. Didn't that ever scare you? Like... No. So, I mean... It's just... It's because I brushed it off. I thought it was just, okay, that's just life. I know that you... you when we met first time, you used to play a lot of video games. And a lot of video games where you can choose the character and almost build this world around a character. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the video games also made it easier for you to accept that, all right, real life... I might not be rocking it and, you know, I might not be the healthiest, but, you know, I got seven characters in this one game and I'm a freaking hero in seven of them. Like, do you think you almost were able to hide behind these characters? Oh, yeah, of course. It's, it's because these characters are in in an, in a different idea, an extension of who we are. Yeah. So for me, I had, let's just say, World of Warcraft. I have a bunch of characters and one of them being a human who's built properly. There was another that's a panda person that is basically my build. There's another one that's like uh, a troll that is tall but skinny. Like for each for each of the characters, they all define something about me. With the with the panda person, yeah. it, it basically is oh yeah okay yeah that's me that's basically me. But with like the the muscle built human, it's more like. Yeah, he is the person that I'd like to be, yeah. but you know that is gonna be never. Yeah, and that's the idea that stuck with that stuck with me. That, that was just impossible. That is never. Okay, so and you're almost playing out your life with what you see. Yeah, and although you wanted to be one, you just you were never gonna make it. So you're the panda. Yeah, wild. And you could use those characters. I used to. I didn't used to play a lot of computer games, but I had a lot whoa, of... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I, I know World of Warcraft, and I know those kind of games, and it's crazy how, you know, you start, like, getting... Like, living through them, and you, you play online with, like, loads of other people. It's almost like you'll be five, five hours online playing this game, this, like, r- world that looks quite real on the screen with this character that is, like, everything you ever wanted. But you want to know something? Yeah. Yeah, we want to know everything. Gaming and weight gain don't really mix together because there there are very few exceptions that are completely opposite to what it is so there's a streamer named Bajira who is a, a, a weightlifter he is literally a weightlifter he has like a proper weightlifting physique and yeah. he does these streams in which he plays World of Warcraft and he's one of the better players but he also ma- he uh, he also does streams of of weightlifting, yeah. so like deadlifts, yeah, yeah. Um, snatches, everything, and that type of mentality for me to watch him that really helped me. Okay, like it made me think more of hey, I can be a gamer, but I can also have a better body. 
Yeah. So it wasn't that, you know, oh, I'm just a fat gamer and that's how it is. Everyone is fat. Yeah. It, 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 didn't, it, it made me realize that, hey, anybody can play the game. Anybody can be healthy. But we can agree that gaming for five hours, five nights oh, yeah, a week is, is definitely not <laughs> like the, the best prescription oh, yeah, for, for healthy course. life. And when I met you, man, like I remember we had these talks. You'd be like, yeah, I just woke up like three hours ago because I gamed six, seven hours last night. We'd be like, what? what? Yeah. Like, and and it's just, you know, like knowing today that you, you game like once a week or something like that. Some weeks you don't even game Dungeons and Dragons yeah. and those kind of things. And that used to be your life. And we, we I mean, we'll, we'll get into this, but that's just a crazy, crazy change. Yeah, it's, it's because now I'm, I'm a much more confident person. I'm a much more social person. And now I'm a much more, uh, more of a person that will realize a lot of things. For me, you're a person that lives in Mo's body now. And not a person who lives in the panda or hey, the night. Hey, hey, hey! Don't get don't get metaphysical on me, okay? <laughs> I am me, and you are you. Let's just end it at that. I am not some you've kind of troll from Zandalar, okay? You, you've just been owned. But I think it's what what we're essentially all saying here is that you were you were actually living in this gaming world to a certain extent, where you'd spend a lot of time invested in it you start seeing yourself as that character so it kind of maybe psychologically has quite a big impact right or wrong yeah. uh, i mean it, it didn't Were give you me hiding an in that world yes that right. that is definite so it did what, have a huge so it did have a huge <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not that it's like bending my mind into some kind of but weird it, but it is though isn't it because it's it's i love the way you've so uh, to to explain it to us like the big panda and then this really sort of rip guy and you just you were always going to be that guy because you knew you were never going to be that guy so it's kind of it's kind of like you maybe never believed you'd be that guy it's, I don't know the thing is the thing is is that gaming is a, a huge comfort thing right so for people it's it's de it's uh, working out for other people it's sports and people like me it's gaming and yeah. then there are people who enjoy books yeah yeah but the whole thing about gaming is that you can get lost in it yeah. Yeah. and you can get comfortable in it thus you would get stuck in it and that is the big problem yeah that is that is the major problem if you get stuck in it then you would end up finding yourself in your chair after 18 hours not having any food and going like whoa really what day is it yeah there are people like that you no 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 not me oh, okay. you would have I'm, the stock ready you would have the food there. oh yeah they, it would just be so right you, there <laughs> You wouldn't have to turn, or would would it be like in ha in reach? Oh no! I'd just and get the bottle, just like that. <laughs> really? <laughs> so let's carry on the story from the basketball. Thirteen years old, yeah. you're out of shape. You know you don't fit in. You know you're different. How does life progress? Did you carry on doing sport? And what what sort of weight were you at that age? Uh, around that time, when I was, I think, fourteen, fifteen, I was around uh, 130, 140. Wow! And. Uh, after getting into the later, excuse me, uh, after getting into the later grades, again, excuse me, uh, getting into the later grades, like grade eleven, grade twelve. At that point, I wasn't into sports anymore, but right. I, but I liked it still. Yeah. Um, and then going into college, uh, a lot of my time was taken by you know studies and yeah. exams and all that. And then there was like a time where. I, you know, joined a club, which was more of my own thing, yeah. and then that got in the way, left it, and then got into way more of education, and at that time, I didn't even think about nutrition or weight loss or anything, because I was way too focused in what I was studying. Yeah. yeah, right. And then once I graduated, I had the darkest year of my, of my life, where okay. I was under a rock, not knowing who did what, where, why, how, and I was stuck in my little world. God bless Excuse you. me. Um, and by little world, I mean basically not doing anything. Like right. sitting on my computer, not talking to people, not gaming, not anything, just sitting there. Okay. How did you get into that? Do you know? Is, is there any explanation or... I don't know. Like, I... I just felt empty, maybe? Or oh, you I didn't felt numb. So the, you didn't the main thing about the entire situation was I felt numb. I've lost my spirit in, that, in a sense of, you know, being happy, being everything. 
I lost my spirits. I found myself just stuck in life, not knowing what I was supposed to do, thinking things that I shouldn't be thinking, and then getting ideas that, hey, my family don't really care about me. I'm just here to exist. What if I don't exist? What if life was different? What if... Yeah. Uh, what if I didn't exist? What would happen to my friends? Would they still be friends with each other? And, and all that. And I got out of that because of one of my friends. And I'm so grateful for him that he dragged me out of that and told me, hey, I want to see you today. Come, come out of where you were. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And I realized that, what am I doing? So you were Literally, what am I doing? Yeah. So you were in this vicious circle and, and one friend reached out and brought you out and I mean, what was the process of him taking you out of that circle? Was it, you know, let's go out and do some activities or like sports or how did you regain your, you know, yourself? Life again? Yeah. How yeah. did I regain my life yeah. again? Yeah. Uh, he contacted me and... How old did you say you were at this stage? At that, at this stage, I was 22. Right. Okay. So it's, it's almost right before we meet. Yeah. It was, it right. was uh, a year before we met. No, no, no. It was it was half a year before we met. Oh wow! Okay. This was around um, around uh, mid twenty sixteen, right. I think. I believe, and um, he just told me, "Hey, let's go out, and you know, I want to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. How are you?" And and it was it wasn't like an actual call. It was just him sending a WhatsApp message, voice note, uh, like a voice note, and. I, I just realized, like, what am I doing? I should be seeing people. I, I have friends. I have family that I have to see. And when I left, I went over to my friend's house, and I didn't realize that he brought, like, like four more friends with him. Like, mutual friends, but still. And it made me realize, I have friends. I have family. Why am I feeling like this? And I went up to them to the group and I apologized like I told them I'm so sorry that I've been in this state of mind for an entire year will you ever forgive me for the stupidity that I've succumbed to and from then on like everybody has been supporting me literally yeah. and you know figuratively as well and so many people on my Instagram thank you very much by the way <laughs> uh, sending me so many good messages and, and supporting messages that it made me feel even better with myself and all I have to thank is my my friend that dragged me out of this, and and I don't know what I do what I do without him. It's crazy how one action can basically almost determine the rest of your life. If that friend wouldn't have been there, maybe there wouldn't have been another friend doing that, and you would have been never here, and you you would never have lost that many kilos, and you would never have been on the journey you're on now. It's, yeah, it's incredible, yeah. mate. There was another tipping point where. You came into our lives, or we came into your lives, both Woo. lives sort of connected, which was in November of 2016. Yeah. And we already knew your sister, and we'd been coaching her, and we were, we were all at a fitness competition in Kuwait, mm -hmm. when your sister actually came up to, I think, both me and Andre, and said, yep. I want you to meet my brother. And we all met, and we shook hands. I, I don't know if you, if you remember it, or if you don't. Yeah, and um, we, we said... It was, was it Friday or Saturday? And we were all flying back that night and we we're like, Monday morning, come to Friday. Was it I think. Friday? Yeah, I think it was Friday. Friday. Okay. And we we're like, okay, when we get back, Sunday or Monday morning, come and see us at the gym. We're going to help you. Mm. When you were at that fitness competition, then when you saw us, and then when we said we we're going to see you in our gym, now what's happening in your mind? Um, I didn't know what I was thinking. Honestly, <laughs> I was too. Uh, jazzed up about the entire competition. Right. It was it was so in, much in what energy. respect? In, you just like, loved it. Yeah, I, I I gained so much energy from just watching the entire competition. <laughs> yes. Right? Like, like half of the show, I'm watching my sister like compete, and I don't know, like there was something that was welling up inside of me, and then once it reached like the halfway point of the competition, I started cheering for her, and that gave me like so much excitement. It made me realize like, what if I did that? Yeah. What right. if I rode? What if I did whatever that move was? What if oh, I did right. that? What if I did this? And then that sort of, you know, clicked for me. That's when I... Really? Yeah, that, that's so when it So just by going to a fitness competition, being in that environment, before we'd even told you to come and see us, you're like, I, I need to do that. Yeah, it, it, it wow. basically hyped me up to Very actually powerful. have that. And That's powerful, man. Coincidentally, yeah. it was the same week that I got injured with my knee. 
Yeah. Or no, I twisted my ankle really, really badly at that at that time. Okay. Like I even traveled with like a one of those casts. Oh like wow. The, the ones where you put your shoe in and click 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 click, not yeah. the actual cast so, thing. You know, like a ski boot. Yeah, like a ski boot. Yeah, okay. like that. So awkward. I know. Okay. <laughs> it was it was horrible. But yeah, that that that's 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 when like everything started to click together. And then on the Sunday slash Monday, I met with you guys. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that really, really helped me go through, like, a lot of things. Like, I, d I started to realize, like, I could do this. I can do this. I can do this. I clearly remember, man. Like, that was that was a big day. I remember I've only been in the, in the UAE for three months at this stage. And yeah. I'd never seen anyone with your weight. I remember... We went inside and we had a quick talk. I mean, Mohammed Al -Kas uh, Mohammed um, uh, Kasim was there, who mm -hmm. also lost 100 kilos and was there to support and to also, you know, share his story with you, so that you knew that it had been done. It had been done before. Marcus was there. I was there, and I remember we're asking you to step up on our in body test, which will measure body fat mass, weight, and etc. And I couldn't even do that. You. It requires you to stand on the machine for about 60 seconds, maybe 90 seconds, something like that. We had you up there, and all of a sudden you, s you step off and you need to sit down. And I, I was confused what was going on. And you're telling me that I can't stand up for that long. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, it just clicked for me. Okay, I have a guy here who can't stand up for 90 seconds. How the hell am I going to train him? <laughs> like, that was, I mean, such a big challenge. Tell us, tell us what you thought when that meeting, when we tell, we're basically telling you, man, if you don't get involved with us and start working out and, and train hard, I mean, you're not going to have a big future. We, we're basically telling you that I'm you might die. potentially <laughs> die from, from this uh, obesity. And actually, Marcus, didn't you say that I was going to die if I didn't do this? I was yeah. going to ask you if you remembered it, which actually <laughs> is, is really annoying because you try, you, you like, I think that's a little bit harsh, but. 10 minutes ago, you already told us that you knew you were going to die. So when I told you, you should have said, yeah, I'm aware of that. I'm here to fix it. But you're like, I think that's a little bit harsh of you. I was like, it's because it's back then I was softer. Like, I didn't think that would actually push me. Really? Like, you're going to die. Isn't that a little harsh? I'm sitting there giving the soft talk. And all of a sudden, Marcus walks in. Mate, you're going to die before you're 30. Hi. You had yourself down at 35. I had it down at 30. Yeah. <laughs> You, you said something then, though, as well, mate. I was a little bit softer back then. What, what does that mean? Like, I wasn't... <laughs> um, I, was, I was less, um, you know, together with right. myself. I was, right. I was very sensitive yeah. to, what I was, to, to what I wanted to hear and to yeah. what I wanted to accept. Why do you think that was? Because I was, I was at a state of being comfortable with myself and... That was the time that I that I decided that I shouldn't become comfortable with myself yeah. until I lose all this weight. Yeah, it's um, so the meeting finishes. Andre, what are you thinking? I mean, you said like, how am I going to train this guy? He can't even stand the body analysis. It's not even ninety seconds, is it? No, and he couldn't stand up for that long. He's two hundred and twenty something kilos. What are you thinking, mate? I'm just mapping out in my head whatever tools I can come up with for this to succeed like what kind of drills can we do seated which kind of drills can we do you know like the trains both the lower body and upper body and you know his core etc and i just started noting down all the all different movements like we had to start with the most basic things yeah. i remember one of the, one of the first weeks i had I had you do a test i wanted you to do a 30 meter walk maybe 25 even less it was basically from seating on a box, walk to the end of the gym, and back again, sit down for two minutes, five rounds. We did a half round, and then you turn, and you said, I can't do that because my knees hurt. So at 326 p kilos, I mean, we can sort of only understand this if we imagine, I mean, I'm 88 kilos, let me carry a yoke yeah, I was gonna say with about, yoke. like, yeah. you know, a lot of weight on, and I would have that sensation in my head. So we had to start super basic, which is seated on the rower, doing uh, rowing with only arms, or seating in a box, doing skis, only arms, just seated on a box, lifting your knees up and down, seated crunches, presses, rotations, all kind of work. And the response was absolutely crazy. We kept it so simple. Yeah. We, we kept all movements simple. We, didn't, we almost didn't even talk about nutrition for the first few weeks. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we made you do... 
take a picture of everything you eat and send it to me. Yeah. How was that? <laughs> well, actually, before that, Excuse we me. started with write down what you eat. Yeah, write and down and then take a photo. And then of I it. was like, man, this guy, this is pretty good. Like chicken breast, vegetables, a bit of potatoes, not too bad. And then we started with the pictures. And then I realized that <laughs> your plate was. sizing yeah. <laughs> was six chicken breasts, three pieces of yeah. beef, two ch- sausages, uh, like... 100 grams of vegetables. I never had portion control. <laughs> and 100 kilo of freaking potatoes. I didn't have portion control. Come <laughs> no, on. I know. I didn't realize it, that it was supposed to be part of the workout. How were you handling the first few weeks or the first month, I mean, the first transition from doing almost nothing to, wow, man, now I'm training three, four times a week? It was grueling. It was, it was horrible. It was killing me. Metaphorically, obviously, it was killing me. I, I was so tired with my life that I, I was questioning myself, why am I doing this? And then I realized, I want to I live. And it was, it, it, was a huge, it was a huge step to go through the entire thing. Like those few weeks, like my knees were killing me. My lower back was killing me. And, and like all this weight was so heavy that, you know, like walking around with it was, was a challenge in itself. Yeah. And then I started to get used to it. I started to have fun with it. How long did it take to get used to it, mate? Because uh, it must have been, like you said, I think two it months. must be hell. So for the first two months, it's literally just yeah. awful. Yeah, and actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it was the first two months. Yeah. And then from there, it just got smoother and smoother. I mean, it didn't get harder and harder or easier or easier. It just got smoother. But you, I mean, you'd lost in, in the first two months, you'd lost somewhere in the region of 15 kilos. Mm-hmm. So you hadn't really lost that much body weight, but why did it get easier? Because I got used to it, and, and it was much more fun. Why was it fun? Well, it was, it was a new experience to actually do those exercises, and then doing new exercises got more fun. Yeah. And then, like, as an example, the Open. Yeah. Which, which <laughs> of the Opens? Oh, by the way, I did all of the Open uh, 2018. 2018. I did all of them, but yes, sadly, I couldn't do the RX. You did the most, most modified <laughs> version. Extremely modified <laughs> scaling. <laughs> but anyway, um, I think it was 18.2 or 18.3 that it had the, the, sing- the double unders. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't even do like a single under properly. And um, on that, on the, I think it was the day before we did that uh, entire exercise, I wanted to get into it. Yeah. And I think on that day, I did a, a total of 100 single unders. Incredible. And I, it's because I had fun with it, and, it got, and I got used to it, but like around uh, 70. And that's, like, that's the idea that if I try something new, I might like it, I might not like it. Skiing, for example, I hated it in the first half of the year. And then it just got it just got simpler, and I realized what I was supposed to do. Oh, I'm supposed to uh, I was supposed to pull it this way. I'm supposed to bend my knees this yeah. way. Keep my keep my back straight. Not let not let my uh, ass go even further than usual. Keep my posture proper. And it it, it got fun, and it got you know smoother. I, I like when you say fun. I mean, fun is yeah, one of the the this. main values of the Interfight company and Interfight brand, and we really put a lot of emphasis on this fun part because we know that the fun part of training is what's going to keep you going and keep you thriving and make you consistent and one thing about you that is really your trademark it's consistency and positivity you have never ever been late actually you've been annoyingly early annoyingly (laughs) early like Mohammed yep. shows up at least an hour before session and he's like, what's up? I'm like, hi. <laughs> Why are you here already? Our session, and it doesn't matter. So we used to train at 12 and he showed up at 10. Then I was like, all right, why don't we try training at 9? Because he's not going to get up that early. I'll fool you not. He s- starts showing up at 7.30. <laughs> but so, I mean, your consistency and your determination has been insane. And I think because... I don't know if you know this because s- somehow I think in the beginning you were not very self-aware. When you said it was grueling and all that and you could barely get through it, I remember and t- till this day how positive you always have been. Always. Like, always smiling, always happy, saying hi to everyone, just you know, creating a buzzing atmosphere in the gym. And I think that's something that is very unique with you that I think has been the main, the main driver 
for you to lose this much weight because you've always like pretty much always come in super happy excited telling stories talking the whole hour whole time. <laughs> <laughs> even when you can't breathe you used to talk yeah i was i was such such a chatterbox i mean nowadays i'm still a chatterbox was? but what can i do <laughs> was, i was gonna say historically <laughs> but let's keep moving forward and one thing you said is that obviously a lot of our listeners viewers have given you a lot of support but you've also put yourself out there you do timeline updates talk to us about those why you do them and the impact they have on on your mindset and your okay. motivation all right so uh for you listeners uh if you wanted to know about my uh progressional timeline this is why timeline. Yeah, Sorry. It's, it's called a progressional Sorry, timeline. Yeah. it's fine it's fine <laughs> no, screw it on, is a Marcus. timeline update anyway <laughs> so the the entire idea idea behind it is that i want to see how much of a change i can go through right and i want I want to remind myself how much uh, how much change I can do. Yeah. So I, I decided to start updating onto Instagram. Yep. Um, and through there, week by week, I would go onto the the, the the BMI scale, and I would see like slight changes every week, getting into better changes into a consistent change, and that got me excited to make it a much more weekly. Excuse me. Uh, into a much more uh, into a weekly type of update, yeah. And from there, instead of it being a weekly thing, it became like four times a week, where three of the days are basically for the workout itself, yeah. showing how much I've I've been doing this exercise and this and that. Yeah. And the fourth day, which would be the end of the week, is the update. Right. And by the end of it, I would see how much of a change between the first. Uh, the first way and then the first update to the last update and depending on how much of the update uh, is like how much the difference is it would it would motivate me even more to push myself nice. like at one point I think it was in one of the months I lost 20 oh, I think in one of the months I can't remember we, we had some absolutely crazy Banging months, yeah. months yeah. In, in one of those months that really drove me hard to actually work hard on it and basically, that like that makes me want to work harder. Have you, have you always been into numbers? No. Well, actually, yes, I was okay. <laughs> when I was Be younger. Because we get a lot of people that say they're not so motivated by numbers, this, that, and the other. But this is like what you're saying now is super powerful, and the driving force of it is is that everything is so measurable. And it's like 20 kilos that month, 15 kilos that month, three kilos this week. Like that's what your your motivation and 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 your sort of attitude towards it was, right? Yeah, well, it's it's all a numbers game, like right. in the beginning, and then I just realized, not really. It's just, right. they're just numbers. Right. They don't determine how healthy you are until you see results. Right. So but when you're losing 15 kilos a month. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's obviously going to be when, a, a big change. When did you start? Aside from the numbers, when did you start sort of looking at yourself or feeling like you were getting results? Like, when did you go, holy shit, I'm not quite as fat anymore? You're in the mirror, you're like flexing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, <laughs> shum, shum. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, when, when was that, mate? It was when my face shrunk. <laughs> I'm not lying. I was yeah. a puffy fucker. I was like this. <laughs> I mean, what's your Instagram again? Mo uh, Mo Al Qasimi. M O H A L Q. Okay. Go back to some pictures. Yeah. yeah. It's uh there's one picture that actually has um uh one of the updates earlier, I think last year. It has the peak and then the um the update of that day. In right. there is a huge difference. Dude, your face was like watermelon. I, I, <laughs> and like a laying watermelon, I didn't have not a, a neck. standing one. I didn't have a neck. Nope. That's how much of a difference it did. It's crazy. I think I think it was it was at the time when I realized I had a neck. I could wear ties now. I f so, you know, you, you've been using social media for, you know, your your own motivation and personal thing. But what I think is so powerful is that you've also used it as a tool to share your story and your your journey with other people. Because you know, in the UAE, it's we have a there's a lot of uh, obesity and overweight mm -hmm. people and struggling with that. And seeing you progressing so much and so steadily by following so simple things, I think has made a, a huge impact, even on people. That are not looking for weight loss. Just people who are, who are looking yeah, to just whatever goal they have. They're like, man, 
if this guy can lose that much weight, I can freaking drag my ass to the gym tomorrow morning, even though I'm tired. Yeah. And I, I think that is super powerful. And we've been talking a lot about, about negative things about social media, but I think this is a huge positive that we should really preach and, and share with people that, you know, sharing your story is, is such a valuable, well, valuable thing. Mm-hmm. Where are you at now? I am where in life and in, in, in literally white. or in, in weight. Okay, uh, I am currently one twenty four between one twenty four and one twenty five. Uh, that is obviously going to be you know a little difference you know for like a while until I work even harder. So that's obviously going to. So you've happen. lost just over. <clears throat> if we take your top figure, you've lost about one hundred and ten kilos. Yeah, you've been mm-hmm. on this journey for about sixteen, seventeen months now. Where will you be at the end of 2018? Uh, I mean, still working out. I mean, that's... Uh, where Where will your weight have gone to? Where will you be at? Hopefully around um, 90. Hopefully, that's inshallah. Yeah, another 35 kilos? Yeah. Wow. Inshallah. That's the goal. Coach, Coach? I agree. I think our lifetime goal is that he gets down to a steady weight of somewhere between 80 and 90 i mean yeah. muhammad is about 163 tall so yeah i think i weigh around 80 and 90 i mean obviously there's going to be a lot of leftover skin that we'll f- we'll have to figure out but at that time how to get rid of that or if we will get rid of it or whatever we're going to be doing yeah. the good thing is that it's been a steady journey so hopefully it's not gonna have too much of a big impact in the end but i think our goal is is somewhere between 80 and 90 and just have a well-functioning life have a good rhythm of training and just make that a, a part of your lifestyle. And I think you have. I mean, you've been, yeah, you have absolutely. such a good rhythm now. Going to Raw in the morning, <laughs> have a bit of coffee, yeah. come to the gym, yeah. work out at 10 o'clock, man. You're already done. Yeah, you've done, a, you've done an incredible job. Before we wrap up, mate, we've got a few things I want to get through. One of those things is now that you have done this work, you've lost over 100 kilos. What we spoke briefly about sort of surgical procedures that were maybe pushed to you or available to you or or yeah just put out there as choices how have your you obviously didn't want to do that at the start but how has your thoughts kind of changed on that and what's your message for people that maybe know someone that's thinking about getting one and you know what 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 do you think about that stuff <clears throat> okay so in the beginning i hated the idea of procedures and uh, surgery and all that yeah. in the beginning, yeah. and then it started to make me make me understand that okay, so there are people that can't really do this. So I mean, that is one way of doing it. Right. It's 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 a very it's it's sort of a gray area depending on who wants to have it and who just wants to have it for you know for the little weight that they want. Yeah. For for a person like uh, for a person like me. In the beginning, I didn't think that a gastric balloon would would work. Yeah. And then it worked for a bit, and then it just, like, spiked up. Yeah. For people that are bigger than me or have extreme difficulty wi- with working out, so maybe they have, like, a, a huge injury in their in some body part. Yeah. Let's say, like, a uh, slip disc. Or, like, uh, knees that are injured to the point where they can't deadlift properly. Uh, I mean, at that point, maybe it could work if you work hard enough for it. Yeah. So if you would have like a gastric sleeve, dieting is extremely important for that entire thing because once your stomach is smaller, everything would ha- everything would have to be used. Everything would have to get in carefully. Yeah. So the person would ha- the, per- the person's stomach would have would have to get used to the diet itself. Yeah. So in that in the beginning of that diet is very important and then once the person gets to the point in their life where hey i can actually move better i can move faster i can move uh, longer distances they can actually start working out do you think that's ever in their mind though depending depending on the person um uh there is a youtuber that i followed for i think a year and a half now and recently he got a gastric bypass Right. And he is, he used to be 570 pounds. Okay. And the big problem with him was that he had 
what was, what was it called? Necrosis? What was, I think it was... Uh, basically, it's dead tissue in, in the muscle. Right. So this guy, he had dead tissue in his leg. So it was extremely difficult for him to do any workout. It would literally move because his legs were filled with fluids. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it a lot. Yeah. So he got the gastric bypass and then started to lose a lot of weight. And now he's in he's in his life he's at a state in his life where he can actually start working out, but still slowly. He right. he lost half of his weight right now. L- let me just point one thing out with what you're saying. I know you're saying that when people have an injury and they think they can't work out, but remember when you came here, yeah. you, both your knees were hurting, yeah, and we still dropped like 15, 20 kilos in one month by making all exercises. Of you sitting on a box, which requires absolutely almost zero, like, yeah. toll on the body or damage. Or I think for anybody out there, if you have a good coach or a coach that is creative, you'll be able to do whatever you want regardless of your injuries. Okay, if you're completely destroyed yeah. and your whole spine is wrecked, yeah. then maybe not. But in most cases, if it's just the knees or the hip or the shoulder or whatever it is, I agree. there's always a thousand ways to work around it. And just like we did with you. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you couldn't. That's one thing we haven't even touched on. I, I feel like we we're missing so much to get the show done. But you couldn't even wear shoes, mate. Oh yeah, yeah. literally, I couldn't even couldn't wear, wear shoes. shoes. I wore sandals. <laughs> I wore sandals. I, I forgot that. I know. It's just like there, there is, there is so much, mate. It, it's, <laughs> it, it's an incredible story. We definitely, we definitely need to get you back on. I mean, yeah. We've, we've tried. We've hopped around. We've tried to share a, a lot of stuff, mate. Before we close out, I want. I, I really want to congratulate you and thank you for. You really have been a massive inspiration to hundreds of people, mate. You've been an inspiration to me, to Andre. Yeah. Like you don't even believe it. And I think that's one of the biggest sort of things is that people maybe you know they don't realize the impact you're having. You're having a huge impact, and you'll get down below 90 kilos i can guarantee if you keep going the way you are for sure so i really hope andre has one final question which you better answer (laughs) no (laughs) we won't put you under any pressure i know he's your coach so but i think it's great that he asks this final question have you ever been get what if you could choose one piece of advice that you've ever been given or learned through your journey what would that be that you want to share with the listeners as cliche as it sounds. <laughs> Here we go. And I this swear to it. God, that this is like one of the most cliche things to say. Never give up. Yeah. Believe me. Believe me. Never give up. That is the biggest advice I could tell you. Yeah. Never give up. Awesome. If you give up, you can find yourself gaining 20 kilos just like that. Awesome. And I'm not kidding. It happened to me. Yeah. It happened to me yeah. really, really badly. That's. I think that's... Uh, and I think you sort of have shown that all through your journey mate i'm sure there's times where you didn't want to get to the gym half an hour an hour early i'm sure there's times where you didn't want to listen to what andre said i'm sure there's times where you wanted to you know you were like oh it'd be so much easier to get back to what i was doing actually but there were times where i got... didn't want to talk yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is no <laughs> you remember like there was that there was, there were a couple times where i was like i don't want to talk do we have like 300 sessions? Yeah. <laughs> There's been like once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it was twice. <laughs> I, just, I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to work out. I want to focus on my workout. And oh, you just, awesome. you, you supporting me, dragging all the problems out of me. And that, that really helped me, making me talk. It's a and super nice uh, set of dynamics. It's, it's a great relationship, mate. Here's the deal. We're going to wrap up today's show, but we're going to get you on when you are below 90 kilos. Oh, yeah. Oof. That's a motivation for me to continue to support you for Andre because we've only scratched the surface. We always say 40 minutes is, is, is what we talk about with the show length. We have someone that's really interesting. We go a little bit longer. We're almost at 54 now, so you've done a super good job on that as well, mate. But 90 kilos, we'll get you back on the show. We'll talk about more of it. Thank you for opening up to us, mate, as well. I, I know it's not always easy to speak about the behavioral stuff in the early years, and I think you've, you've probably put a lot in perspective for people. If Mo can lose over 100 kilos, dudes and dudesses, you can lose the 10 or 15 that you need to. Yes. Follow his mantra, never give up. Muhammad al Qasmi, thank you so much, mate, for everything you've done for us. Well, thank you for being there. Thank for me. you. Awesome, bro. Yeah, there we go.